Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chem Connection that provides you with regulatory news in between ChemCon conferences. In this episode, we have a mix of European developments like restrictions, biocides and the SCIP database, Asian developments and the impact of COVID-19 on industry. Since ChemCon the Americas 2020, early March, a lot has happened and the COVID-19 pandemic rocked our world. This is also impacting ChemCon. ChemCon Europe, originally planned for the last week of October 2020, will be postponed to the last week of October in 2021. For ChemCon Asia 2021, we're investigating if it's possible and feasible to do this in spring 2021 somewhere in Asia. So it might be a bit longer before we can meet face to face again to network and learn about regulatory updates firsthand. Therefore, this and upcoming camp connections will be packed with regulatory updates and actions for industry from all over the world. Updates that we have divided in smaller chunks. Therefore, in this video, only minor teasers, but at the end of this video, you can click on the actual longer videos or just browse our YouTube channel for many more interesting videos. Let's start with the skip database, because before we know it, it's January 5th, 2021. I asked Kevin Pollard of the European Chemical Agency what industry could do now. Indeed, uh, time flies. The first step, and hopefully many companies have done this already, would be to make an inventory from the supply chain um, on their product portfolio and identify any components that they are either manufacturing or uh, procur procuring and supplying uh, that contain SVHC. Much more on the SCIP database background and how industry can already prepare themselves can be viewed in the full video. I hope industry finds time for their SCIP database preparations in these hectic COVID-19 times. I asked Jeff Schatz of Thermofisia Scientific how COVID is impacting industry. Needless to say, our R&D colleagues have been hard at work developing new products and our manufacturing teams have been scaling their op operations. And this is all being done while uh, juggling facility validations and gaining regulatory approvals. Essentially, we're all working together to build this airplane while, while still in the air. It is great to see how creative and solution-driven industry can be in these times of need. Were member state authorities able to keep up the pace and show a similar flexibility? This is something I ask Uke Keningswald from the European Chemicals Agency. Well, for member states, uh, it was quite difficult. Of course, overall they managed, but it was really uh, difficult times because there was not much time available uh, to assess uh, the situation. At the same time, they really had to ensure that the products that we were uh, permitting to be on the market uh, to meet the demand uh, were sufficiently safe, sufficiently efficacious. Substances indeed have to be safe. Hopefully COVID-19 is a temporary situation, but some things are forever. I asked Mark Blaney of ECA to provide us with an update on the restrictions in relation to forever chemicals like PFAS. Actually, ECA's committees are discussing a number of PFAS substances at the moment where they've been proposed for restrictions. Uh, SIAC actually adopted in June its final opinion on one PFAS substance. This is perfluorohexane 1-sulfonic acid, or PFHXS. And here SIAC has concluded that the expected benefits and uh, the cost to, to society are uh, well balanced. Uh, indeed, actually, that the benefits would outweigh the costs, and therefore the restriction is the most appropriate way to address the identified risk to the environment. Not only in Europe, but also in Asia, authorities are very active in the field of chemical control legislation. I asked Doris Tsai of Tsatek how industry is implementing the Taiwanese Toxic and Concerned Chemical Substance Control Act. There are some observations I'd like to share. First, items allowed to use IPI international public information are now expanded to all endpoints, of course, if available. And the second is hazard and exposure assessments deadline have been postponed, but the exact date and administrative process is TBD. And the third is now the labs of colleges and university are allowed to conduct tests. I also talked to Amy Lee of Huntsman in Shanghai and asked her what are the most important regulatory updates in China. The revisions of the new chemical substance registration regulation ME order number 12 and the draft of environment risk assessment and control regulation are the most pressing regulatory updates. ME order number 12 will be implemented by January 1st, 2021 
and then MEPR number seven will be abolished. What industry can do to prepare themselves for these changes, as well as important news on confidential business information? There is a maximum five years of CBI protection under MEE Order 12. You can watch in the full video. Please also see the other full versions of this June 2020 Chem Connection. Thank you for watching, enjoy summer and stay healthy.